So our duties, submission to the laws, Romans tells us very clearly, as well, Romans 13, national well-being. Listen to this from, Peter, from uh, Paul in 1 Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgiving be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, so that they may lead, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Well-being, national well-being. We're actually supposed to be involved in the assurance of the well-being of our nation. Dr. Bergen raised that as well. Jeremiah actually wrote that incredible letter to people in exile in a much more hostile place than we live today, telling them to work for the well-being of that pagan nation. Prayer is part of that. Participation is part of that. Selecting good leadership is part of that. And that takes a discerning person to select good leadership, doesn't it? You know, there's a lot that goes into a good leader. And we have to look for a lot as we're trying to find a good leader. And it is really important that that leader be a person of faith. And I really like it when that person is a person of my faith, of the Christian faith. I'd like it even better if they were a Southern Baptist. <laughs> but that cannot be the only consideration when I choose leadership. You may recall we had a president who was a Southern Baptist and that didn't work out too good. So we need to look at other things. One thing we need to know is, does that person's faith actually affect that person's lifestyle, and does that faith actually impact the decisions that person makes? In other words, what kind of person is this really? Not just what does he say, but what does he do? And not only what does he do, what has he done? Look at the record. And let the record tell you whether or not this is really a person that's going to uphold your values and the values of God. In fact, folks, values are more important than party. Hmm. Democrat, Republican, independent, nothing. Okay. What are your values? And not just what values do you tell me you have, what values do you support? Now, I'll tell you, somebody who tells me he or she is pro-life yet won't support any kind of legislation that reigns in elective abortion in this country is not pro-life. When you can't even find an elected official who will help pass a law that says parents ought to be involved in whether or not their children get abortions and whether or not the parents ought to be involved notified when the children are about to get an abortion and that legislator tells me he or she won't stand for legislation like that, I tell you that is not a pro-life legislator. Parents should be told when their children are going to get abortions. And if we can't just get that done in the culture, then we need to get it done by law and we need to look at our politicians and ask our politicians, don't just tell me you're pro-life, show me you're pro-life. And so we also have this responsibility to pass moral laws because law has a restricting nature. <clears throat> because, you know, we know what happens when lost human beings run amok <laughs> and law helps to restrain the worst impulses of human nature. It does have that purpose and it does do that job. Some people don't do some things because they know it will get them in trouble. Okay, if that's what it takes to get people to restrain their fallen nature, okay. Let's say there are some things we will not tolerate. It doesn't matter whether you want to do them or not. We won't tolerate them as a civilized people. And law also has a teaching function. 
It teaches our children the values that we hold. And it says, you know what, my parents feel that this is so important that they passed a law to support those values. That must be important. Law has a teaching function as well. It either teaches immorality or it teaches morality. And which of those things it does is dependent on who's passing the laws. Folks, it's now and it's you. It's the church engaged, fulfilling its civic duties and its God-given duties in helping this country be the nation that God desires it to be and to be the place that God would choose to bless and to be the people that God would choose to bless once again. That is in our hands. We already know what God wants to do. God wants to bless. He's looking for a people to bless. The question is, will we be a nation he will choose to bless? Well, I have more to talk with you about this uh, in uh, the next session. Uh, thanks very much, and uh, look forward to being back with you this afternoon. God bless you.